Hi guys! I actually had another entry in this week's vlog done, but I decided to scrap it and just do this. Um, it's kind of a, it started out as kind of a good week. My, for the, for quick update health wise, my wraps came off Monday. I was able to take them off. Um, my ankle, he is healed perfectly. I have no lingering effects. Um, no pain, nothing like that. My knee, on the other hand, it is still giving me pain off and on. It's not the sharp stabbing pain that it was, but it is still kind of noticeable and it is kind of annoying to me. So I don't know if my mom meant this to cheer me up when I complained that my ankle is totally fine. I have no pain in my ankle. I have full range of motion in my ankle and I tested it because I talked about how my ankles go sideways. That's something I start, my mom revealed that I started doing in gymnastics. Um, I don't know if she meant when I started, when I was on the gymnastics team in seventh grade or when I took tumbling classes in elementary school. But I will turn, because of how, and I also wonder if it's related to how my feet turn out. Um, I can actually turn my foot, my ankle, like sideways, like a ballerina, like for their positions and stuff. And I've always been able to do that. So as soon as the wrap dropped, one of the first things I did was tested my ankle to see if I could turn it sideways. And I can. So my foot is healed. I have full range of motion. My left knee, on the other hand, like I said, still have some off and on pain there. And like I said, I don't know if my mom was trying to cheer me up or what about it. But she said, because this is the knee I have jacked up before. I think this is the knee. I, this is the knee I bruised the bone, jacked it up when I was like in fifth grade. And a year later, I think this was the knee that I sliced open when I slid into a culvert drain. So that's a long, complicated story. With the weird thing being we didn't even know I had sliced my knee open until we got home because I hadn't ripped the jeans I was wearing. Like, literally, the culvert took the jeans and sliced it up into my knee. Gross. But, yeah, that's what happened. Um, so concerning all the times I've hurt this knee and jacked this knee up, and now the sprained ligament, my mom is thinking that I will never, I will always have some form of pain. I've actually had pain in this knee before in 2017 when I came over from Mackinac Island and I was working at the Halloween store. I noticed when I was walking after a while, my knee would really start bothering me and it would be hurting and sore. Dr. Aloff at the time suggested that it was just because I had used my knee a lot more than I was used to and... But now I'm wondering if it's like a leftover symptom of the fact that I have hurt my knee and jacked it up so many times in the past. And now this one time, it's just like my shoulders. I was told I have to watch my white shoulder because I jacked it, I have jacked it up. So I need to be careful. I'm 31 years old and my body is falling apart. And the funny thing is, is I just started being more active. I was a lot more active when I was a kid. Took like 10 years off and now I'm back to being active. So I'm going to push through this pain, find ways to deal with it, ibuprofen, I just took a long soak in the tub because that usually helps um, watching and my exercise stuff, but my goal, like I said, I'm doing the Marvel 80th Challenge for one, one Disney this year, and I had my tablet in upside down in the case, and biking and stuff, so I need to get myself eased into a active lifestyle for the summer. Because if I don't get the job at Dow Diamond, one of the things I talked about is, like, like I said, I really like baseball. The Diamond is about seven, eight miles away from where I live. That's like an hour bike and half 45 minute bike ride. So my plan is on Sundays is if I don't get the job at Dow Diamond to on every so often on a Sunday, bike down to the baseball diamond and pay, I think, like seven, ten bucks to go sit on the lawn and watch a game because they have afternoon games at four or five at four or five and I can leave early or the games will be done early enough that it's light out and I can back home and that would be a really fun thing to do. So one of the many things I have planned for this summer that also include going up to Mackinac Island again. I am talking with my friend Erin about we have jostled that idea back and forth between us. We both it's both something we really want to do. It would be the first time well I don't think we'd be alone but because my dad might come with us because he wants to go. But if he doesn't come with us, it'd be the first time he and I are alone together outside the city. And that would be um, a big, 
step forward in my relationship with him and in my parents' perspective of him if they let us go all the way up to Mackinac Island by ourselves for a day. Because as of right now, um, he and I, we can hang out, but we have to stay within the city limits and I have to be home before five or six. So I can't stay out past dusk with him and I have to stay here. So that's why we haven't, we've gone and done a few things together. But for the most part, we kind of stay in the city limits. So to do something like this, which would mean he'd come and pick me up at like maybe 6.30 in the morning, and we probably wouldn't be home to maybe 9, 10 at night. So my dad would probably come with us simply because, but I also want to go to a zoo this summer. I love going to zoos. Like literally, I'm an adult and I tell my mom, you can just leave me here, I'll be happy. But some zoos, I want to go down to Detroit and John Ball. Well, my top two are, jo are um, Potter Park which is in Lansing because I wanted, because what we did this a couple of years ago. And usually when we would go down to Potter Park, we'd go to Potter Park Zoo in the morning and then we'd have lunch at the park. And then um, in the afternoon, we'd go to the Michigan Historical Museum because my brother and I, for some odd reason, we love that museum. Um, when I went for the first time when I was in fourth grade because state requirement, I, when I was a kid, all the kids had to go to the capital and we went to the building and the museum I fell in love with the museum so that summer when we went to Potter Park we usually did Potter Park in the morning small not a big zoo easily done in the morning come home and sometimes we stop at Birch Run but my mom was like let's go to the museum because she remembered I really liked it so we started going to the museum my brother really liked it so we had a lot of fun we weren't able to do that last time because my dad got sick so I want to go to Potter Park Zoo, the Michigan Historical Museum. I kind of want to go to um, Henry Ford Museum and Deer Henry Ford Museum in the Village. It's this really cool museum. It has like a ton of historical stuff, like Abraham Lincoln's chair from the night he was shot. I think they have JFK's car from Texas, and they have a ton of stuff. And then they have Dearborn Village, which is kind of like Amer Michigan at the turn of the century, with like um, Thomas Edison's workshop and stuff. So I want to go do that. Um, I also want to go, my other thing I want to do is I want to go back to Detroit. I love the Detroit Zoo. It's so much fun to go down there. I love it, like, a huge amount. And then if we could, I'd love to go to John Ball Zoo. So I got some zoos I want to go to, baseball games, Mackinac Island. The other place I really want to go to is I want to go to Michigan's Adventure. I didn't get to go last year partly because I was up on Mackinac Island until July, and my dad didn't really want to go. So here's the thing. My mom doesn't like amusement parks. My brother's not a big fan of amusement parks. He would basically do nothing while we were there. And so would my mom. And so usually when I go, um, when I've gone to Michigan's Adventure, I've always gone with my dad and his family and his friends because of the fact that my mom and my brother don't want to go. It's the same thing with why I will probably never go to Disney World as much as I would love to because my dad would be the only one who'd go with me but he'd probably spend all his day at the pools. Neither my mom or my brother really want to go. My brother's starting to get more interested in Disney, but that's simply because he found a YouTube channel where they talk about all of these rides and the history of the rides, and they do do a lot of, not just Disney, but a lot of music parks, but they do do a lot about Disney because all these big rides are at Disney. So he's gotten somewhat interested in Disney World and Disney in the past year or so, but that's mainly because he's a techie and he's just focusing on the rides. <laughs> Whereas I would want to go on the rides. So that's probably why I will never go to Disney World unless I find someone to go with me because I want to go spend a week down there. Um, well, actually six days because four parks and one day would be shopping at Disney Springs. So like six or seven, I don't know. But so yeah, I want to go to Michigan's Adventure this year. It's so much fun, and if you guys have seen, two years ago, I did a vlog for Michigan's Adventure with my dad and my cousin. It was awesome. So, yeah. Um, other news, not a lot of news. Celebration, they have officially announced they are doing an episode 9 panel with J.J. Ab JJ Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy. Those are the only um, guests they've announced for that panel. Honestly, I'm not shocked about the episode 9 panel. I don't think they really need, I know they under I understand they need to announce it. But I don't think it was really a surprise to anybody. I think we were expecting, like, we were going to get an episode 9 panel simply because it is episode 9. This is the last Skywalker movie. And Oscar, and Oscar Isaacs, the guy who plays on Poe, announced that it is officially the definitive end to the Skywalker saga, which I'm going, oh, shoot. This movie going to make me ball, ain't it? <laughs> so, yeah, um... So we have that. So episode 9 panels announced. They haven't announced anybody else, anybody from episode 9, anybody like that. But still, they announced it, so that adds on to the fact they're doing episode 9, Phantom Menace, Resistance, Rebels Remembered, and Clone Wars. 
And the weird thing is, is Tracy Caballo, I don't know if I mentioned this, she has come out. She's a publicist for Lucasfilm. People are asking, are we going to get anything at the animation panels? It said, we are announcing, we are not announcing any new projects at this time. And then like five days later, rumors started circulating that Disney is looking into making a series about Knights of the Old Republic, which I would be thrilled. I'm kind of hoping more for an Old Republic one because I have never played Knights of the Old Republic, which is weird because I'm such a huge fan of Revan and that's where Revan is. But I have never played Knights of the Old Republic because you kind of have to pay to play it. And the only reason I have, and I can't really afford to play Knights of the Old Republic when I'm paying, when I'm a free to play player, but then I'm paying like every other month $31 to play Old Republic so I can be a subscriber. So honestly, I, I've seen people play Old Republic. I've seen the graphics. I kind of like um, Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic. I kind of like Old Republic more than Knights of the Old Republic. Because Old Republic is kind of more open, and in Knights of the Old Republic, I feel like you have a very strict storyline you have to follow. And in Old Republic, you have a storyline, but then you have all these little things you can go do, like PvP and War Zones and all this stuff, which I don't do. <laughs> I'm a horrible player. Like, the number one complaint in my guild is I don't do flashpoints with them. But that's because um, I ran into this issue the other night. My boss was there, and I have, every night when I play, I have a strict guide of what I need to do, and that particular night is I was got jumping online, getting a new die because I was redoing my Sith Warrior and my Sith Inquisitor's wardrobes, and I was doing that, and I needed to get that done, and then after that, my goal was to jump online to Valentina, my Sith Warrior, who I'm currently running through the story with, and get all of Terrace done, because once I finish, once you finish Terrace, you have the option, it's part of the story, so you should do it, um, a flashpoint involving Revan and the Foundry, and that is actually two flashpoints back to back, you get a little bit of the break in the middle, so I wanted to finish it Thursday night, so last night I could jump on and do the first flashpoint boarding party, and then today do Foundry. I didn't think I was going to get that done, because my boss came online, I was on Republic side because I needed to get dyes and stuff, and he just started talking, and I'm like, I kind of need to go. And so I logged on about 6.30, and it wasn't until almost 8.30 that I actually went and got to um, go play. Luckily, I was able to finish Taurus, which means I was able to get the first part of the Revan stuff done, which is boarding party. I'm going to do the second half tonight, maybe get a little jump started on the next phase of Chapter 2 for Valentina, but then I have, I'm debating about that because I take a break on Sundays, so I'm not playing Sundays. So I gotta figure that out tonight, but my goal is to get the Foundry done, and I always get sad because I had to fight HK, and I love the HK drawings. Die, me bag! That is like the, every time I hear that, every time I see HK, like, when I played Knights of the Fallen Empire and I saw HK, I got so excited. And then, spoiler, HK dies. I'm not telling you when, but he dies. And I swear, I started bawling like a baby because I love HK so much. He is, like, my favorite droid next to R2 and BB-8. I love HK and CB-32, which is Kaz's new droid. So, that was awesome. Speaking of Kaz, I got a shout-out from the voice, from the guy who plays Kaz in Resistance, Christopher Sean or Sheen. I don't know his last name. He actually liked a tweet I did because um, last Monday, last Sunday was the first half of the season finale, and I said I like watching Resistance because I like seeing Kaz's grow through the series. I know some people are saying they're bad mouthing Resistance; they hate it, they think it's horrible. This they're, they're finally redeeming themselves. I'm like, I like Resistance. It is what it said it was going to be. It is for kids, but now they're starting to get into the darker time period. We learned some big stuff. I'm excited for the. But, um, final episode tomorrow, which I will probably watch Monday. But I said I liked the growth, but the episode, it left my heart feeling really, really sad at the end. And he liked it, so I'm really excited, you know? It's kind of cool because I've had Tracy, that publishes I mentioned, she has liked a couple of my tweets. Ashley Eckstein has liked tweets on my birthday, and she um, has retweeted them. But that's because I always mention I wear, I, my thing is I like wearing her universe on my birthday now, because it's my birthday, I should wear what I want, so I wear her universe. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but David Yost, who played Billy in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, um, for my birthday, I sent him a tweet, and I said, hey, it's my birthday, and I want to ask you a question. How did your, I know it sounds silly, but how did your glasses stay on? Because in the early seasons of Mighty Morphin, I, I'm pretty sure you wore them in lasers, and he had glasses, and he did a lot of combat and, like, gymnastics and stuff. And when I got glasses, and I have, and when I got them again, and I would rewatch it, it kind of fascinated me because his glasses never fell off. 
And I will not wear my glasses when I'm biking or walking or running or anything like that because my glasses will come off. So I don't like wearing them when I'm doing anything really active. I don't wear them when I'm vlogging, but that's because I don't like the reflection. Um, so I asked him, how did your glasses come on? He's like, well, I actually had three pair and one of them was, um, had like added, had like straps or something. I'm like, oh, thank you. So that was kind of silly, but I got a happy birthday and David Yost answered my tweet, answered my question, which makes it so cool. That's probably the reason why I'm on Twitter more than Facebook is because it's so much easier for me to interact with people. And I like Facebook, but Facebook is my family. Twitter is for my fandoms. <laughs> like literally you see what I like on Twitter. It's like Detroit Lions, some Tigers, Star Wars, nerd stuff, Disney. That's pretty much my Twitter. And then Facebook, it's my mom, my dad, my brother, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my family, friends, everything like that. So Facebook is my family. Twitter is my fandom. And Instagram is just where I go to randomly post pictures. That I'm like, hey, look at this. This happened. Click. Um, continuing on in the vein of Star Wars, you guys remember back in Thanksgiving, around Thanksgiving, I talked about this, that I tried to order the Captain Rex jacket from her universe, which is a part of um, her, our universe, which is a part of her universe. Um, and I really wanted this jacket. It's really cool. Um, if you go, I don't have, I can't show you a picture right now. But it's basically white and blue, and the back is Rex's helmet. And I really, really wanted this jacket because if you can't tell, Captain Rex is one of my favorite characters from Clone Wars. And he's, like, one of my favorite non-Jedi characters of all time. I love Rex. I'm like, he should be my uncle. Like, literally, I think it would be, like, the coolest thing to have been raised by the clones. That would have been an interesting childhood. Um, so I really, really wanted this jacket. I had looked at the Ahsoka tunnel dress, and the idea, it's nice, but it's got, doesn't have sleeves, so I'm not a big strapless person. Um, I looked at the, the only other item I wanted was probably the Obi-Wan Kenobi sweater, and I don't think that would look good on me. I still might get it, because next, this year. Um, but I really wanted the Captain Rex jacket, and so I had ordered two shirts, and then I decided to go ahead and order the jacket. It was on sale. Well... Even though it said on the website it was in stock, they canceled my order because I had called them and was like, what is taking so long for my jacket to ship? They're like, oh, it's on back order. And then, like, the next day, they canceled my order because they didn't have it in stock and they didn't know when it was going to get in stock again. So I was really frustrated. You guys can – I posted a video I don't remember what it's called, but I talked about how I didn't want this to ruin my Her Universe experience, my – stop my shopping with them. Um, so – I was cruising, I was looking at Captain Rex, I was debating about trying for this jacket again. Work Wednesday, my friend Heaven and I were looking at it, and I actually went to Hot Topic instead of Her Universe, because it's actually, our universe is actually kind of sold through Hot Topic. You can order it from the Her Universe website, but it is part of Hot Topic. And they had the jacket, this jacket is normally $79.99, it was on sale for $56.99, and I'm like, What? And my friend Heaven, is, she's like, you should get it, you should get it. I'm like, I'm thinking about it. I come home, and I said, okay, let's try this. I signed up to get emails from Hot Topic, because if you sign up, you get 30% off your first purchase. And I'm like, I'm going to do this. So I got it, got the code. I did 50, it was $56.99 on sale. I subtracted the 30%. That brought it down to $39.99. I'm like, should I? They had like two or three of the jackets left. I got a size, I got a 3X because unlike her universe, which does like sizing unisex, they only have the jacket sizes for men. I'm like, okay, I'm a girl. I got some accessories. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get a 3X just in case. And so I got a 3X. It will probably be too big, but that's okay. Um, and then I went and I placed the order. So it was $39.99. Shipping was about five bucks. Tax was about two. So with shipping and tax, it only came to forty-eight fifty-six. That's an almost eighty-dollar jacket I got for under fifty. So that is actually a pretty good deal. And I have been, I spent afterwards waiting and hoping. And I finally last um, Thursday night, I got an email confirming that it has shipped. It is on its way. So I am super excited. I told my mom, I'm like, Mom, my jacket shipped. I'm getting this jacket. And my mom got excited, too, because she knows I really, really wanted this jacket. And I was absolutely devastated when my order was canceled. Um, and I was even, and I'm like, I might try again. So I'm absolutely happy I'm getting this jacket. It's on its way. It should be here next Wednesday. I am thrilled beyond all belief to finally be getting my Captain Rex jacket. 
I cannot wait to put it on. I cannot wait to show you guys. I think it is awesome. I think it is amazing. Yes, I have spring flowers. I went and got some spring flowers to put in my um Prince Charles and Princess Diana mug. Because seriously, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be using that for. <laughs> that mug back there in the flowers, that is an actual Prince Charles and Princess Diana mug from when they got married. My mom found it at a thrift shop in Canada. Got it from my aunt. My aunt passed away. I got it. And I have absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to use it for. It's really cool. I actually have it turned so you can't see Charles and Diana and you can see like the Welsh dragon because um, he's Prince of Wales so that's why that's there so I have it turned for the Welsh dragon. Um, but yeah, so I use it as like a little vase for fake flowers. I'm going to try to grow some real ones this year. Um, but other than that, it's been pretty mellow. I'm trying to let my body heal. I've gotten back into yoga. I found a 15 minute burning morning workout. Burning literally, like, uh, at the end, I can barely keep myself off. I have noodle arms. I need to strengthen my arms desperately. I already wear gloves on my hands when I'm doing this exercise because it has me going from, like, a down dog to a high plank to a low cobra to high plank to down dog and then back through that, like, three or four times. So to keep my hands from slipping, and then I have to do, like, a bridge um, tabletop where I stretch out one arm and one leg, reach behind me, grab my foot, all that fun stuff. So I um, wear... Fingerless gloves to help me grip my mat a little bit better because <laughs> it is very sweaty. I did not know yoga could be sweaty, and then I started doing it, and I'm like, wow, I'm slipping. <laughs> um, so I found that. I've been doing that. And on, side effect is I did it for a couple days, and I noticed right before I would go to bed, I suddenly was hungry, and I don't know why. So I'm back doing yoga two times a day. Sundays, I'm thinking maybe switching up and just doing it once a day so my body has a little bit of a break. I switched what bedtime practice I do. I was doing one that's 20 minutes. I found one that's 10 minutes that works a little bit better for me, depending on what I'm doing, how long I'm online, so I don't have to worry about trying to get in bed. So, um, yeah, but work schedule is the same. I only work next Wednesday again. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. My nails are ready to go. I have, I don't know if you can see them, I have green and white hair clips with um, clovers with um, shamrocks on them, but my nails were the one thing I was worried about. Um, I am Protestant, so on St. Patrick's Day, I still will wear green, but I also will wear orange. Um, so that makes it a little bit hard for me to find stuff for St. Patrick's Day because nothing has orange on it. Luckily, my mom found a guy's t-shirt for me. But I'm hopefully going to church, so I can't wear to church. So I just painted my nails orange, and I'll do a little hairstyle with the clip in it. So happy St. Patrick's Day to those who celebrate it. Um, but other than just doing this, I don't really celebrate it. Um, yeah. And I totally skipped over the reason why I decided to restart it, to re do a new entry for my vlog, but I didn't want to start everything off with downer. So if you don't want to hear the downer stuff, I'll give you a thumbs up when it's over and you can mute it for now. But I know I'm probably going to get a ton of hate and a lot of dislikes for this if anybody even bothers watching it, but I was absolutely devastated. Yesterday, I don't usually turn on my computer until 2 o'clock until I'm ready to write. So I had no clue yesterday about what happened in Christchurch, New Zealand. I did not know anything about it until I turned on my computer and until I went on Twitter and I saw all these things and I was getting confused and I did a little bit more research and I heard about it and I cannot believe it. I mean, that's 49 lives for what? Snuffed out because some stupid, because a bunch of people decided that they're going, they want to prove that they're the better race, that being white is so much better. So what do they do? They go shoot up a bunch of innocent people who are just trying to pray and practice their religion. That's not right. That's not fair. And that's not how we should be. And I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this because I get a lot of flack for the fact that I'm Christian and I support the Palestinian cause. But why should, why should they be getting, I mean, when you look at what the Israeli government military are doing, that isn't right, that isn't fair, and to have people all over the world just sit back on their hands, world leaders, people in power, and say, oh, it's not, doesn't concern us, that's not right. What's happening to Muslims, this fear and hatred, that's not right and that's not fair. And it's because right now a small minority have power, and that small minority has this power base that believes in this thing that white is better, white is the best. And that anyone who is different, anyone who isn't white or Christian or any or isn't like them, or like I should say like us because I'm white, but I don't believe in their beliefs, that they should be able to just destroy these people and just ruin their lives. It's not fair. 
it's horrible and I don't believe in it. And I want to say my thoughts and prayers are with my Muslim brothers and sisters because that's who I truly believe they are. You know, I was brought up to believe that God wants us to love everyone just like he loves us. It doesn't matter who they are. And that's what I believe. So I'm really devastated by yesterday. So, okay, you guys can unmute this. All the sad stuff is over. And I'm with hi, mom. I said hi. I think you're on camera. I think I got you on camera. You. I'm vlogging right now. <laughs> I'm going to get going. My mom and my brother are home. So I will talk to you guys next week. Everybody stay safe. Stay sane. Hug your loved ones a little bit closer and tighter. I'm sending you all lots of love, hugs, and prayers. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.